Hello, uh, I'm Dave and here to talk about our 2020 uh, Grateful Dead box set. It's a little cold today, as you might tell, I've got a toque on, um, I don't have enough jackets on, um, got some gloves on. Uh, if you're watching the Dave's Picks 33 video, shot it on the same day as this one, it's since got a bit colder. Um, I had to run home to get a toque because it's pretty cold. Um, so I'm here to talk about the uh, box set for 2020. It's really exciting. This is a box set that if I was going back 30 years ago when I was tape trading and this had been uh, an official release, uh, it probably would have been my favorite official release ever. And I, I think it, I mean, I'm really excited about this one. Uh, a little bit of background, as you probably know, uh, it's a five show, 15 CD box set as is quite typical of what we've been doing lately in terms of you know four or five shows on 12, 14, 15 CDs. Uh, this is the five complete shows from June of 1976. Uh, two in Boston, two at the Beacon Theater in New York City, and then one at the Capitol Theater in Passaic, New Jersey. We'll get into the reasons why it's kind of two and two and one uh, in a second. But about three years ago, the Grateful Dead received a huge uh, batch of tapes that came in on a truck. Uh, it was a, a long time coming. These were the uh, infamous Betty boards, famous Betty boards, that had been in a storage locker many years before and had been auctioned off. You know the story probably. But these tapes finally came home. And the tapes included, of course, Cornell and Red Rock 78 and Buffalo 77 and a lot of famous shows that you're probably wondering why you might have had great tapes of them for many years, but they've never been released. Uh, it's because we never had the master tapes, and that's why you're seeing more of those being released now. Uh, some of the 77s, the Dave's Picks 33 um, that we just mentioned. Uh, I'm not sure which of these videos is going up first, so I won't say what it is, what the Dave's Picks is, but they're probably going up simultaneously. So, um, Dave's Picks 33 uh, show. Um, so, a lot of tapes came back, but amongst those were these shows that I think, again, if, if you were tape trading uh, back in the day, uh, or you know, you just listen to Archival Dead, you know these shows because they're really good and they sound incredible. And so the Dead, okay, going back to June of 76, they come back to active touring, two shows in Portland, Oregon, then four in Boston, two in New York, three in Passaic, four in Philadelphia, and four in Chicago and they were playing only theaters. No more wall of sound, no more stadiums, no more big arenas. That was to come, that was in the fall. They did some more arenas. Um, and then in the spring of 77, they were back to arenas full time. But even in San Francisco, when they came back in July of 76, after this tour, they didn't play Winterland, they played the Orpheum. They were playing theaters um, when they came back. They played a couple stadiums later that summer, but again, no more wall of sound. Uh, so a big reason the dead took their time off 74 and 75 was the physical exhaustion that the wall of sound caused pretty much the the constant touring um, the crew uh, being exhausted from the wall of sound just constantly touring in order to fund this thing that cost a lot of money with a huge staff to put it up so they did took a couple years off they come back in June do this incredible tour a lot of things have changed uh, first of all and I think the biggest thing in terms of the dead's music Mickey Hart was back in the band. That's a huge change, of course. Um, he had been out of the band for about five years, doing his own thing, did Diga Rhythm Band, did Rolling Thunder. Uh, the Grateful Dead had gone off on their journey and done a lot of albums without him. They did uh, Wake of the Flood, Mars Hotel, and then Blues for Allah, but then Mickey was back in for Blues for Allah. They, uh, they toured Europe. They, you know, there's a lot going on. So in 76, Mickey comes back in the band. That's the first really big change. Another big one, as we mentioned, the wall of sound is gone and they're playing through a more standard PA, a great PA. Apparently these theater shows sounded wonderful. Um, and a new repertoire. Now, they still were playing, they played a lot of the old songs, most of them, but then there were a lot of new songs added, both uh, songs that, they, that they'd never played live before on tour, the stuff from Blues For All I'm talking about, some stuff from Jerry's solo repertoire, Mission in the Rain, The Wheel. Uh, from Bobby's solo repertoire, we have Cassidy, um, we have, uh, which hadn't been really been played once, but it hadn't been part of the Dead's repertoire before the hiatus. Uh, Lazy Light and Supplication from Kingfish. So there were all those new songs, and then there were 
reinterpretations or uh, new arrangements of some older classic Grateful Dead. St. Stephen returned after a five-year absence. Cosmic Charlie also five years. I guess uh, early 71 was the last Cosmic Charlie. Um, Dancing in the Street came back in this new arrangement, which I love, and I love the jam that the new arrangement allowed. I listened to a lot of disco... I forgot to say disco dancing. The 76 to 78 arrangement of... Dan or 79 arrangement of Dancing in the Street. And I just love it. I love what the jam allowed them to do and the precision. So they came back with all this new music, plus Mickey and the band. Tempos had changed. Um, the format of the shows had changed a little bit. And they were playing some incredibly inventive second sets. Whereas in 73, 74, don't get me wrong, a, a Dark Star, Eyes, uh, China Doll is certainly inventive, but they were really stretching in these shows in 76 and playing a lot of the new material in um, in new sequences. So it was really a, an amazing time for the dead. Even the first sets were amazing. Oh, they, the music never stopped. There was a lot of new music. All that helps with Franklin's Crazy Fingers. Um, they had a lot of really good new music to play. So they come back, they do this tour. They play four nights in Boston. The first night was released by the Grateful Dead as part of the Road Trip series about oh, 10 years ago, the final Road Trips. The fourth night was an FM broadcast. Um, and the two middle nights we never had in the vault until a couple of years ago. The Beacon Theater, same thing. Two nights, uh, never had those in the vault. Then, uh, oh, one little duck right there. Um, and then uh, they did three nights in Passaic, New Jersey. Now, the first couple nights have been released. Uh, one is a, a download series many years ago, about 15 years ago, and then one is part of the Dave's Pick series. And then the final night, which is, I think, the best of the bunch, um, had been an FM broadcast live in 1976. So I don't know if we'd ever release that one as a Dave's Picks or anything like that, but we figured putting out this four show box set with two Bostons, two Beacons, this would be the time to get this show out to the world in this quality. Um, so we figured we'd put it in there because it is a great show. It complements the other four very, very well. Um, so it's cold out. I'm going to have some, some hot, tasty beverage. My third cup of tea. Excuse me. And... And so we decided to put it in there. We hope you don't mind if you already had the FM broadcast, but it is a really, really good show. Um, there's a lot of repeats in these five shows, but they're all played very differently. The Helps of Franklin's Dancing in the Streets, Samson and Delilah, Brown-Eyed Women. I think there's four brown-eyed women. Uh, but like the dead, they're all played very, very differently. And when you get to know these shows, and if you don't know them that well, you will if you get the box set, um, you start really identifying the nuances and that's what I love about the Dead's music. People ask me, well how many versions of that song can you listen to? And the answer is easily to me, it's all of them because they're all different. They all have nuances and that's what I love about something like this. You look at the cell list, there's some repeats, not a, not a lot, and they're very different shows, but the nuances. That's what I love about the Grateful Dead. So in these shows you get a lot, like I say, you get a lot of the material that was on uh, Blues for Allah you get a lot of the returned material uh, from that it hadn't played in many years, the Cosmic Charlie and St. Stephen and Dancing in the Street. And then it's those little rare things like the wheel that kind of was hadn't been in the repertoire. They'd never played it live. And then they kind of dropped it a bit and then they brought it back. And it was one of these songs that just kind of came and went a little bit. And Crazy Fingers. I mean, it was a really interesting time for the Grateful Dead. We get these incredible music never stops. And this is before the 1977, in particular 78, when they really jam out the music never stopped at the end. This is more the precision versions of the Blues for Allah arrangement of it, where it's nice and tight and concise. And I also want to say something about Donna. I'm a huge fan of Donna Jean Gotch. I'm a huge fan of any member of the Grateful Dead um, and their contributions to the Dead. But I think June of 76 in particular, uh, Donna Jean never sounded better to me, ever. Like this is, she is perfect in all of these shows and I love listening to these. You know, people will say, well, in 74, she couldn't hear herself because of the wall of sound in the monitor system, uh, which is a very fair assessment. And sometimes they're singing, you know, and people are like, well, she didn't really, the vocal blend, and it wasn't just her. There was, I think, some vocal harmony problems. Then. But if you listen to some of the versions of Looks Like Rain, Cassidy, uh, anything on these shows and listen to what Donna Jean's doing. I mean, I'm getting kind of goosebumpy talking about Donna Jean's contributions at these shows because they're really, really good. I mean, I love what she's doing at these shows. Um, sound quality of these shows too. 
I love all of Betty Cantor Jackson's work. I love it. I love the Spring 77. I love the Spring 78, the Summer 78, all the late 77, which is very different from the Spring. But to me, kind of like Donna's singing at these shows, this is my favorite Donna singing. These are my favorite Betty boards. These ones, there's a clarity of each instrument and there's a, uh, a cleanliness to the sound. There was no noise reduction used. Um, they just sound in hope these waves don't do it. Oh, some big logs down here. Um, the clarity of the music and, and the, the, the individual instruments and the vocals, I don't think I can think of any Grateful Dead two-track live recordings that sound this good. And this is 15 CDs of this stuff. Um, Betty, I don't know what she was doing on, the, on this tour. Um, all of her tapes, 77, 78, 79, they all sound incredible. But there's something almost studio quality about this except the one big difference you get clearly a live performance and the energy that comes from that and you do hear the audience between songs freaking out because you know it's the dead playing in a theater for the first time in a couple of years they hadn't been the east coast so you get these audiences that are incredibly rabid and this is a lot of my friends i'm thinking of bob minkin uh steve borock uh all these friends from from brooklyn from long island from new jersey the Beacon Theatre in particular were uh, the first shows to a, uh, for, for a lot of my friends, these were their first shows. These were people who had wanted maybe to see the dead in 73, 74, might have been too young. And then a couple years go by and then they come back with these theatre shows and it was their chance to see them. So I do know a few people who these were their first shows and lucky them to be their first shows. I mean, my first show is pretty good. I like my first show. I listen to it all the time. Uh, it was 11 years later, but um, these would be good first shows to see. Um, so check out the box set. It's a beautiful, spectacular box set. Uh, good friend Jesse did some wonderful, wonderful liner notes. Uh, we've got some great archival documents inside. Um, a good friend named Grant uh, did some photos from Passaic. We've got some great Passaic photos in here. Uh, so it's a really great box. It looks beautiful as you would come to expect. Um, our last few box sets going back the last maybe half dozen years, I mean, I'm going to go back 15 years and say that the packaging that Rhino and previously Grateful Dead Productions did, I think has been exceptional. But the last six or eight years, what Rhino's done, I mean, there's a lot of Grammy nominations for the dead in the last few years for package design, four or five of them, I think. And they're all worthy because these are incredible packages they're doing. And this is Lisa and Steve, the, the crew at Rhino. Uh, well, Steve is independent, but um, uh, Lisa Glines and Steve Vance and Doran Tyson and Yvette Ramos. Um, and then we got the master overseer. Don't forget, we got Mark Pincus at the at the top of the loop, and he's just making things sound, uh, making making everything we do possible. So again, this isn't a, a thank you. My phone's ringing. Sorry about that. Um, I mean, I should know to turn the ringer off, right? But I do just want to say this isn't uh, an acceptance speech of any kind. It's just to say thanks and to give some recognition to the people involved. Jeffrey Norman with the mastering. Um, Plangent Processes did this, uh, did the uh, audio restoration of this and the, the time correction. Uh, they sound incredible. They really do. And the package looks so amazing. Again, thanks to, uh, to Lisa and, uh, and Steve uh, and Yvette for kind of coordinating the whole thing. Uh, Doran for, you know, the vision she always has. Uh, Doran Tyson. Couldn't do what we do without her. Um, and Mark Pincus, again, who makes everything happen. And I just kind of come down here and shoot videos and do what I do. So thank you. Uh, June 1976, a wonderful box set. For me, it's up there with the Summer 78 box is one of my favorites. I Believe me, I love Europe 72, and I love the Cornell box set, and I, lo I love everything we do. But there's a special place, and I think it goes back to tapes I was listening to 30 years ago, and these June 76 tapes certainly fall into that. But I do really like this music. I think it's a very unique time for the Grateful Dead. It's some of the best music they ever played. I think they sounded better than they ever did. Uh, or I shouldn't say that. I'll say it was a top five peak era Grateful Dead, I think, in terms of their sound, up there with Spring uh, 90 and um, Summer Fall 89, and up there with Spring 77 and Europe 72 and the Live Dead era from early 69. I put that up there with well, this music up there with that as some of the best the Dead ever played and most unique. It's really a unique era in Grateful Dead history. They never sounded like this again. Even on the fall tour, they didn't sound anything like this. So check it out. Five shows, 15 CDs, spectacular packaging, wonderful liner notes and photos and archival stuff as you come to expect. 
Um, overall, just a, a really, really, really great batch of, of goodness. Um, June 76, check it out, it's on dead.net. Dead, dead um, I don't know where you're watching this. And uh, am I forgetting anything? Nope, but um, I, well, I probably am. But uh, again, I'm happy you stuck around with me. I'm freezing, so I'm going to go get warm and send this off to the folks at Rhino so they can send it to you. Um, by the way, uh, here we are. This is, uh, I'm shooting this on January uh, 8th. 2020. Uh, happy birthday, David Bowie. Uh, I just want to say we've got a big year coming up. Part of the reason this box set is coming out early in the year, usually as you know our box sets are quite a bit later, August, September, October. We have a big year coming up, 2020 archivally in the Grateful Dead world. So we wanted to make sure that this box set was given its due, given its time and space to breathe. That's why we're putting it out early in the year because later in the year we've got other stuff that also requires its own time to uh, to breathe. So thank you for listening. Uh, I really appreciate uh, all your support and the fact that you still dig what we do because we really dig what we do and we do it because it's fun and, um, and hopefully you still like it. So thanks for watching and we'll see you uh, next time we do one of these.